I'm very psychotic in a way that I plan out every single thing. Like I plan out. I know this is going to sound really crazy, but okay. I have literally planned out my entire life. I even planned out when I was going to get pregnant. So uh, did it happen the way you planned it out? A bit, no, but yes. Because crazy. I ngam-ngam habis finishing a shoot for a feature film. And I haven't been in any feature film since I first did Mosin. Yeah. So it was like a big deal, mm-hmm. very big budget, mm-hmm. big cast, yeah. huge project. Yeah. And I was telling myself, like, I will not get pregnant before this project. You know, I was telling myself, like, I was like, no, 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 no. And I legit, li- like, I literally got pregnant right after that shoot. Hey, 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 welcome to Mama's Here. I'm Diana Hashim. And I'm Sophia Mastan. We're here to share the real unfiltered sides of motherhood. Think of us as your mom gang on this crazy adventure, constantly learning, growing, and most of the time, just winging it. Mama's Here because we know you've always been there for others. Now it's our turn to be there for you. Hey there, beautiful people. Welcome to Mama's Here. I'm Sophia Mastan. And I'm Diana Hashim. And today, we're debunking some of those motherhood myths, those expectations we all had before diving into this really insane role versus the sometimes hilarious, sometimes unbelievable reality. You know, like expecting those peaceful, picture-perfect moments with your little one only to find yourself in the middle of a diaper disaster or a toddler meltdown. Or thinking you'll be that mom with a super clean house, healthy home-cooked meals every night. Yeah. And then in real, li- in real life, you know, it's it's <laughs> lies, all lies because you'll be eating all the leftovers, microwaving it and you'll find toys in the most random places, places in the world and let's not forget the I'll never let my child do this or do that moment <laughs> fast forward to real life and it's a whole uh, it's a whole different ball game exactly and that's why we're really excited to have Shari Ariana. hi Yana she's here with us today she's a mom she's an actor she's the founder of Confidence Cosmetics and she's a you know really here to get real with us and talk about the wild world of motherhood but first don't go anywhere we're gonna hear from our sponsors We at Grow & Glow Mama are a sanctuary where motherhood meets empowerment. Together, we embrace strengths, lean on each other, and illuminate the path for all mamas. Join our vibrant community on Instagram and hotline group. Let's grow and glow together every step of the way. Welcome back, everybody. So, Yana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Yana. We're so excited. The energy in the studio is just another level today. Uh, yeah. It's what I bring all the yeah. time. I'm naturally, energy. and you look so good. Thank you. Stop it. Yeah. Yo. You know, you have great taste. Look how we're twinning. Yeah. Right? Oh, I feel so like We did not kidding. plan this, but we are all wearing black. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. the way they do their hair is the same. Yeah. The this isn't is the first time, too. No. Like, we've been You're manifesting, to a, is it, to each other every no, time? No, you know what though I've always looked to you as like I was like you since the get go even before you we met I was like you're you're a super cool person yeah, yeah. She is. and then after that it was like the day that we met each other at like a rent, one of the events I was yeah. like we're basically wearing the same yeah. thing it has <laughs> happened every single event since oh my god like you know when she picked me up from downstairs I was like wait a damn yeah. like look at you look like we were- and you guys didn't even text each other too. No. <laughs> great minds take a lie yes <laughs> but either way thank you so much for joining us really thank appreciate it. And it's, yeah, so we're really excited to talk about the expectations versus reality about motherhood. Mm-hmm. But first and foremost, let's I'm gonna direct this question to all of us. Okay. 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 Did you have a specific expectation of what motherhood would be like? <laughs> Let me laugh first. <laughs> okay, yeah, laugh first. Go. I think like yes and no. Like I I had like a very vague expectation. Uh, which would be like it's gonna be super 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 hard right you know so it was like a very vague one but I didn't have like any specific expectations like I'm not gonna do this or blah 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 da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. it was more like because the thing is let's just like first off like like right off the bat like I never saw myself as a mom mm. oh. I've always seen myself as a career person like I've always seen myself as like I've I knew I was gonna be successful I knew I wanted to be like I want to build an empire I knew I wanted to do so many things Mm -hmm. and one of them was not being a mom 
And then I met my husband and then like, you become a mom. And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe I want to be a mom. Actually, okay, the reasoning why I didn't want to be a mom is because I didn't want to be a, like a mom who was doing it alone while she was married. You know what I mean? Like for yeah. her, like there are many, we know yeah. a lot of yes, these women yes. who are doing everything alone. Yes. Because that's why we always hear. Yeah, yeah. we hear it all the time. Mm. And we, we personally know many, many yes. moms who do everything alone because the husband just like, you know, Kishi like, yeah. Yep, yep. So that's why like, I knew I did not want that. So unless I found someone who was going to be a good father mm. and husband, mm. then I was going to have a kid. Good. And you found him. I found him. Yay. Yay. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I didn't really have an expectation because of that. Okay. And also, I didn't have the time to have an, the expectation because mm-hmm. when I realized that, like, yeah, I want to be, a, like when I finally said like, yeah, I want to be a mom. Mm. <laughs> and then it happened. My. My. Yeah. Talking about the power of manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. Like too fast. Because like people ask me like how was your trying to conceive journey? Yeah, it's just it like it wasn't a journey, babe. It was it was it, it was, was literally a, like a walk down, down to the you're done. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very <laughs> ready <laughs> set, like Zara said, ready set go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was very quick, which you know it makes me feel guilty sometimes right. because there's many many stories people of that, people yes, who yes. took years. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's your Riziki lah. Yeah. It's like a very quick pregnancy, yes. healthy one. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yes, yeah. yes. okay. Now you. Yeah. Oh my God. My oh. expectation was, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Little mm-hmm. did I know that I go crazy when I become a little stay-at-home mom. It's not easy. <laughs> so it, that was my yeah. expectation. I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm going to be like this perfect mom. No this, no that. Mm. But no way, man. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Okay, I love. think it's because of TV. Too much TV. <laughs> Wait, they watch too much TV no, or you I watch, watch too, too much, much TV. TV? You know like how so much TV did you consume that said I you have to be like Desperate that. Housewives? <laughs> <laughs> Desperate Housewives? Okay lah. I mean. Okay lah. No, I mean, I you mean. know how the movies were last time how mom is supposed to be like, you know, just cooking, cooking uh, and all these things. And I've always seen my mom like that but she works but she's always like at home so right. I thought that okay lah, I want to be. Remember my father asked me this question. Do you uh, when you are married? Would you want to work or do you want to be a, uh, just um, a housewife? I say I want to be a housewife. Mm-hmm. But if you were to ask me again, I said no way. I want to do yeah, everything yeah, and yeah. build an empire like Yana said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How mean, about you? I thought, well, okay, well, I for me, I I think I sort of like kind of mentally prepared myself a little bit. So I got really lucky when I found out that I was pregnant because my ADHD actually made my brain become normal yeah. human brain. Whoa. Oh yeah, so that like, does happen though. I yeah, heard, yeah, heard, yeah. So like it was very quiet, muted and like very chill. I was horizontal most of the time. Yeah. And I had like a lot of really great advice from a lot of people in regards to certain aspects of motherhood. Like for example, making sure that you take care of yourself and like certain moments on how to deal with your, like your partnership and everything. But in terms of specific, specific expectations... I mean, I was not aware of how the lack of sleep could really drive a person up the freaking wall because it is... That was like the one that what someone missed out. Everyone said, "Oh, you're gonna miss out on your sleep, ha ha ha." But nobody said what and what happened if yeah, you miss yeah. out on your sleep. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you never understand that, right? Until yeah. you are actually in it. <sighs> Absolutely, but like, it, did you ever actually imagine it to be a peaceful thing? I think I'm lucky because I remember my family banya. I'm surrounded by women. Like yeah. my family. And you have nieces and nephews, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. So like I saw my aunties and uncles do it. Mm-hmm. You know, mostly my aunties lah. Because mm-hmm. I'm very close to my aunties. So I saw my aunties, you know, and how they dealt with motherhood. And I saw my my cousins do it. And then my sisters. Because I'm the last child. Yeah. So I have three older sisters. And two of them have gone through motherhood. Mm-hmm. And so I had like a lot of chonto yeah and I was there yeah. to especially with Kat Lea's first uh, first the twins yeah they, whoa Lea and I have, we basically we are like the par- like the second set of parents like it was the parents and then Leisha and me because yeah, yeah. like we were there every single day after school from like after school until we went back to school the next day mm-hmm. taking care of those two girls mm-hmm. and like we were we it's were it's twins right it's a double it's, it's, twins. Like yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's that's why we, we had to be there so it was I seen I I the whole not sleeping everything semua yang tu semua ada macam biasa hadap see you know that 
actually does make a difference when it comes to dealing with expectations versus reality. Like, so for us, we were not, it had been a while since we last seen a baby, to be fair, because okay. I'm the first, like, I'm the first one to give birth amongst my siblings. My cousins, I mean, we weren't like, we didn't see each other all the time. So we never really understood the journey. We didn't really like get hands on about it. But I find that, you know, if you have an understanding of what it can be like, maybe the realistic expectations actually come to play mm-hmm. yeah. were you like surrounded by kids I'm the first child no, the I'm... first grandchild yeah. who has a babe who has a baby so yeah. it, it was also a while yeah. so no I do not have mm-hmm. like I remember I was breastfeeding I was pumping mm-hmm. and then suddenly blood comes out from my boobs oh my and my God. mom and my mom was like do not panic but her face was so panicked <laughs> oh so I'm like oh, you see no. do not panic but your face is so panicky I was it was Hey, why? I thought it was a breeze. Like you know, people always check out breastfeeding. It's like this, yeah, so yeah, easy. Yeah, oh, yeah, but yeah. Was, oh my okay. goodness! Do you know this is the best part, lah? We're gonna start listing out all the crap that all the people say. <laughs> oh, it's actually yeah, easy. breastfeeding is good. It's so good for do you. You know, lose weight. Oh, Hell do you know? Not. Do you know? Do you know what though? Do you know what though? I think those guys, those people, are a holes because <laughs> they forgot. The likelihood How many How many yes, things, true. How many times You want to bet I bet you 10 ringgit right now The people who said Something about parenting Is easy They they Their kids I'll Are at ready. least Are like 10 yeah. years and above mm. And they had a mate Oh yeah For sure mm. For sure And they have like Driver yeah, mm-hmm. And I don't have that yeah. You know Like mm-hmm. I, don't, I know you don't, I don't So have, you do everything yourself mm-hmm. I'm a full time mom And business woman And yeah. content creator And actor yeah. Oh my god So that's why I'm like yeah, I think Why? Like, what, do you do it yourself? But like, someone asked me that day, like, you you have a mate, right? And I was like, no, <laughs> like, mm. I mean, I you know? orders with my ergo there. Yeah, like I. I don't have a mate so I don't yeah well I guess like in a lot of senses I for one wanted to be more of like the laid back kind of mom situation but obviously there is no such thing and seeing as the fact that we all do so many things at yeah. a time and oh. more so you lah like your business <laughs> lah me lah tu la. you also ah Sophia yeah, another yeah, one yeah, yeah. at least for me I'm a freelancer okay <laughs> I'm like I'm still like I can take that job if I want to but if I don't want to it's a different story so I can lie down how do you balance that? Like, I mean, this, it, and do you find that being a mom has changed your mindset of becoming a bit more of a better planner? Um. Okay, so that's the thing. Like, I know it's weird, but I have, ah. I'm that person. Like, I was literally a child and I knew, okay, this is what I'm going to do at this age and everything. And then when I look back at everything that I have done, yeah, and it's, I, it's I'm like, there. I'm at like, I'm like 28 this year. Yeah. And I look back at all the things and I was just like, okay lah, I, maybe I miss a year or two years macam depan sikit, kurang sikit, whatever. But I basically ticked off everything that I said I was going to when I was a teenager. Dang, that yeah. takes But a also, lot. you have a good foundation, right? I think your mom and dad are very supportive in everything yes, that you do. Yeah. Completely. But they also macam, okay, you know, you can rest, right? You know, you, yeah. you know because for them, they're like, they... They can see the amount of things that I'm doing. And even they're like, are you okay? You know, that kind of thing. But yeah. I've always been this person. So, mm-hmm. they're pun macam, okay lah, we'll be here mm-hmm. if you need us. Mm-hmm. Because yes, they are a very good support system. But I've always been wanting to do, I've always wanted to be independent. I mm-hmm. want to do things myself. I want to do, you know, which is a bad thing actually. Now that I'm talking about it, yeah, I'm yeah. not saying it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. But I, I've always wanted to like be independent, do things myself, all those mm. kind of things. But yeah, so I've always been a planner <laughs> up to the point that when I... Gave want, birth? <laughs> yeah, when I wanted to, no, even get pregnant, I even planned out when I was going to get pregnant. So uh, did it happen the way you planned it out? A bit, no, but yes. Because Crazy. I ngam ngam habis finishing a shoot for a feature film. And I haven't been in any feature film since I first did Mosin. Yeah. So it was like a big deal, mm-hmm. very big budget, mm-hmm. big cast, yeah. huge project. Yeah. And I was telling myself, like, I will not get pregnant before this project. You know, I was telling myself, like, I was n- like, no, 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 no. And I legit, li- like, I literally got pregnant right after that shoot. 
Wow. Yeah. But I think it's the power of manifestation. It's a bit it's a bit scary, it's a bit weird. But I actually wanted to get pregnant a little bit later. Because I was mm. like after the shoot, after everything, blah blah blah. But mm. ngam ngam after the shoot, that's why it happened. Pregnant. Wow. It's like I'm doing it now. But how's that going for <laughs> since you're such a massive planner, how's that with yeah. your kid, man? Kids no you can't plan, plan your children. kids. I mean How old is Mimi now first? Now he's eight months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I know it's the best time <laughs> ever. Um but yeah a lot of planning I mean like I even okay the thing is I'm a planner Mm -hmm. but the executing it is like I would love to do everything myself but I cannot so Mm -hmm. that's the one part that I'm like you know okay there an expectation versus reality there you go you think you can do it yourself you can't you You cannot cannot, you you know you 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 probably will execute it the way that you want it to but it will take up so much of your energy and mental space oh my god yeah 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 so you guys don't do that like yeah yeah, there is such thing as mental breakdowns there is such thing as burnout Mm -mm. you can't do it alone so oh my god yes and that's something that I'm learning to Mm -hmm. you know and thank god I have my mom friends because Mm -hmm. I have no idea where I'll be without you guys but it's true like I think I say it a lot and I you know I mean like I'm sure I say it a lot to you guys too like no god thank you guys you know but yeah like having a really good support system especially like moms Mm. is something that I'm like oh my god thank god like uh, thank god like I feel like this is what I'm saying by like you know I plan but like certain things that I don't plan, like meeting you, meeting Dan, yeah, no, not meeting Dan. I've known Dan, but like for for Dan to like introduce me to her mom mm. group and you to introduce yeah, me to your yeah, mom yeah. group, that is the kind of things that you don't plan. But it's the rezeki that you come from planning. Like, cause I plan to memang I want to help people and I mm. want to have mm. a, a group of people and everything. I already plan all these things. Yeah, but the things that come with the planning that you didn't plan yeah. is sometimes greater than your plan. Of course. Yeah. It's like trusting the process at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I find that's the case with like, even when things don't go your way, it's always, it's there a is better, a reason. Yeah. There's always, always a reason. Better, a better outcome, outcome for yeah. you later on. And because you're such a planner, right? Okay. But life is messy sometimes. Uh-huh. So All how do you like handle these messy and chaotic moments, especially in motherhood? Okay, so dulu, I used to be way worse at handling these things. Before the pandemic, I was so... I would get really, really angry when the things didn't go my way. Because, yeah lah, I'd have planned everything. And mm. everything... If if everything goes to plan, then it'll be great, you know? So it if it did Two years out of our lives. Yeah, yeah like, so after the pandemic... Did you plan the pandemic too? <laughs> Oh she was my a- god, you know, you want to talk about planning. Huh? <laughs> During 2020 was the first year, because I'm a freelancer, kan? So, 2020 was the first year that I secured jobs from January up until December. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, a yeah, full yeah. year. Oh a full year as a freelancer, this never happens. So, a full year of full jobs and then the pandemic came. Oh no! And I lost every single job. Oh yeah. my god. Oh my god. But how do you, yeah, okay, so how so, do you actually handle that? So now, after the pandemic, and I think, thank God that I got pregnant after the pandemic, yeah. because the pandemic taught me, like, to calm the whoa, freak down. The, the, the <laughs> level of riddle and, like, <laughs> let things go out of my control yeah. has, like, I went through such a huge like transformation during mm. the pandemic of not being able to go out and yeah. I'm someone who works. I love working. And your wedding is I even in the Yes. Oh. Even the wedding I couldn't control. Nothing. I couldn't control anything. And yeah. I was like, I think like I have already gotten rid of that that like ah feeling already <laughs> yeah, during yeah, the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. they're like ah you know. So like now I'm like, okay. This didn't, didn't happen. Okay, that means something else is going to come. Uh, if then yes. I'll plan. I oh, love that. Yeah. yeah, then I will plan. And if it doesn't happen, I'm like, okay, adela, adela hikmahnya tu. Yeah, there's, you know? a uh, there's, there's a reason. There's, a there's always yeah. a reason. Whether betul, you want to look at it in a spiritual manner or not, yeah. it, it's like, there has to be a reason why certain things don't work out for you. And I think mm-hmm. like, it takes a lot to actually be able to do that, I find. Yeah. To be and able accept. to have... To, the, to have that acceptance, mm-hmm. to have that self-reflection, to be able to come to that stage in your life where you're able to say like, hey, you know, like this is not happening for me. But and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. So how did you reach nirvana basically? <laughs> but that's what I said. Like, I think I went through hell. <laughs> and like, I went through hell twice. <laughs> and then like came back and kind of went like, hmm, okay, yeah. 
Yeah. So don't beat yourself up for it if you are yeah. actually yeah. I mean yeah. definitely. I think I think this is more frustrating for who people who plan because mm. they like like to plan right yeah. and when it doesn't mm. come your way Mm-mm. then you become like oh my god my yeah. life is over but actually it's okay do you, can you relate to that babe like Sophia do you feel like are you, you a sometimes now? I used to be <laughs> you have two children now yeah. you've got yeah. <laughs> but yes I am the kind of person that if I want that that has to happen yeah so I think after a long discussion mm-hmm. with a lot of wise people, mm-hmm. I feel like I need to let go of things that doesn't resonate with me anymore. Mm-hmm. Things that is not like, like D, D always said to me, like, you need to know your worth. Mm. So you need to just like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Step aside yeah. kind of thing. If you can't, you, you, it, it, it can be very frustrating. And I think sometimes you also would have that moment where like, oh, ah, mm. but you need to let go. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, like ultimately, if you don't let go, you're pretty much done for, la, dude. I mean, I, 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 funny enough, it was like, this is the most interesting conversation that I had in terms of letting go, it was from my gynae, my doctor, Dr. Ragu from Asunta, <laughs> who basically, at that point of time, I was about to give birth. Or oh, I was like already at the tail, I was at the tail end already. It was almost like full, full term. So we were, she, uh, my daughter's due, was due on the 31st, sorry, on the 1st of November. Okay. So the day before that, we went, were supposed to go in to induce her. And then after that, the Dr. Ragu was like, oh, okay, so basically, if she, She's currently like not low enough that if we induce her now, basically you're going to be in labor for a while. Lah. There's a huge likelihood that you're going to be in labor for a while because she's not ready yet. And I was like, okay. So then after that, he was like, you know, I mean, I, you can wait. It's up to you to decide, but I'm going to ask you if you would be ever had the thought of potentially getting a C-section. Now, bearing in mind for me, ah. Uh, if there's anything that I cannot like certain expectations and like reality versus reality is the pain of childbirth oh, and I'm yeah. so sorry to say la. like for me I was like I'm not gonna lie when he said would you consider opting for an elective C-sec I said Ya Allah yes tell me more mm. tell me everything about it but you know but, but by the way he had explained it because there were so many horror stories to it yeah. at the end of the day and I'm not encouraging C-sections or neither am I discouraging it mm-hmm. for whatever reasons but ultimately one of the expectations that he said to me was that for a person who goes through a c-section your expectation like versus reality is essentially this it's your recovery period oh, yes. baby comes in and out very quickly but if you're the kind of person who needs to bounce back fast who needs to run around and do all sorts of things who needs to have control of every single bloody <laughs> thing in the entire universe and need the like... house clean or whatever uh, that one is not for you yeah. are you a chill person and I was like so does that mean I basically get to be as horizontal as possible and like not do very much he was like yes I was like yeah I can definitely do it for sure like but, but that was okay for me <laughs> look at your face yeah. what is wrong <laughs> tell me now <laughs> no I remember I had C-section yeah. I was supposed to get normal birth too but then I, it was an emergency so okay yeah. C-section oh my god the pain for, for who for both for Mariam was emergency Zara was emergency too uh... so the first one they cut me I remember and okay then the pain was like after like a few hours, it was because I did it in Sabah and I think the robot is not like that strong, I think, or whatever. It was so painful. <laughs> I remember I wanted to pee and I can't pee. Oh my God. <laughs> I remember oh I my said God. this. I just said, it's okay lah. If Daniel wants to marry another one, it will be Because it was that painful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my because God. it was so painful and then but I'm also like I like to get up my feet so yeah. the doctor say after two days and you need to start standing up Yeah. after that one night I just start standing up oh, dude. it was so painful but then I did it yeah. but again you cannot baby yourself Yeah. but expectation people say oh you know C-section is just like it's not going to be that painful. It's just fine and now. It's just like it's sikit, sikit afterwards. Sikit, ah, sikit. No. Oh, to, C-section is recovery period. Yes, yes, yes. During the moment, if you do elective C-section, it's actually a very pleasant experience. Like my, I mean, I'll be... Oh, like, because you, you 
You planned it, yeah, and yeah, you probably yeah. wouldn't have gotten into labor or like had contractions. I had, funny enough, my contractions. contractions. So I had the this mild experience of what it would potentially be like to have like a vaginal childbirth. But then in the end, I was just like, screw this shit. And then after that, I went to my doctor. My doctor came in lah. Like I went to the hospital six o'clock in the morning. He shows up at seven. He's like, I heard you're in, uh, already in labor, sort of. Uh, like uh, you're having contractions, also, is it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, oh, do you want to consider maybe going for vaginal births? Since you're having your contractions and I was like how far along am I he was like it's still the same as the one that is, it has been since the, yesterday as well as the last week so technically I was only dilating 1cm at that point and I was like oh my god no I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm go not through like- that I was like, no, thank you. Can you put it, uh, like, give me C-section now? And then after that, oh, that's fine. Because um, what you are experiencing now is essentially the 2% of the whole experience. What? And I was like, get me under the Did gun. you do normal birth or? <laughs> no, I had an uh, emergency C-section too. And the weird part is, yeah. I never felt a contraction until I was on the way to the operation theatre. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay, like, okay, I okay. legit, like... The doctors kept asking me like, don't you feel anything? Because yeah. I was like hooked up to the scan and they saw that my numbers were so high. Yeah. And they were like, you don't feel anything? I was mm-hmm. like, no. Mm-hmm. Then they were like, do you feel like want to push or anything? And I said, no, I don't feel anything. I feel very chill. Mm. Then they were like, okay, because um your child's heartbeat is already dropping and Ooh. your body's actually already contracting but you don't feel it so there's some disconnect happening wow yeah so that's Unless why your pain threshold is super high i think, I think so because i'm a little b like i'm a i'm a, I think it's I'm a bad not very, pain threshold good i don't know because i'm not very i, I you hate, suck i'm not you. very good i'm not very good with pain no but you pernah sakit tak? like as in physically like in pain have you ever been in pain in pain yeah yeah, but so like as in that's the thing. I, I think you know. <laughs> see, that's the thing. Okay, so period cramps. You get bad period cramps. Yes. Okay, there you go. If it's bad ones, then there's a likelihood that you could like somehow, somehow uh-huh. your pain threshold will be a little bit higher. My period uh-huh. pains have always been very minimal. Oh. I had never been sick in my life. Alhamdulillah, I've never been to the hospital for whatever thing, oh. which was why the two percent that I experienced oh. was, was like pain, pain. really, okay, really okay, bad. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think like. In that expectations versus reality, it's like depending on your situation, yeah. lah. Yeah. But I really, yeah, because the thing is, like, uh, uh, so talking about expectations mm. versus reality, like, I really expected my body to just do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just Flush do it you automatically. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the part that annoys the sh- out of me. My, both my old, like, my two sisters young already that give birth. Yeah, right? yeah. They both were the ones who were like, pregnancy is great, it's beautiful, it's so oh, easy. Lord. I was the healthiest when I was, oh. like, because both my sisters also have, like, ADD and, like, anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they were pregnant, all of that just disappeared. Oh. So they felt the healthiest they've ever right. felt. They felt really good, yep. you know? And, like, Leisha's pregnancy was, like, Leisha's birth yeah. like it was like what maximum 15 minutes Mm-mm. in and out done Mm-mm-mm-mm. you know that kind of thing and like Kat Lea punya birth she gave birth three times yeah. the first one was C-section because she had twins but the, the third and the fourth pregnancy yeah wait what the second and the third pregnancy yeah. like nothing so both of them were like no one you yeah. know you would know what to do and my mom was so saying like you would know what to do that kind of thing so I was just like okay cool do you know and then like yeah and then like <laughs> expectation pun macam <laughs> okay lah yeah, yeah. tell so, you my expectation after this year. and then like okay so I was like okay and then like when the doctor kept saying like there's a disconnect there's something not happening and right. then there's like the my jalan tak buka and mm-hmm. my baby was already in distress so she was just like I'm so sorry and I know you wanted to do you know no. you wanted to do normal but we, I think you know, if we wait any longer, you're going to get too tired. The baby's going to get too tired. And her priority, she's the best doctor in the world. Mm. Kyron Mani- uh, Dr. Kyron Marina Thompson, mm-hmm. hospital, Thompson, KD. Mm-hmm. Best, best doctor in the world, hands down. But she was like saying that like, my priority is getting both of you out here safe. Mm. So she was just like, I'm so sorry, but we have to lah. You yeah. know, and like, we have to do it now. So yeah. like, I was like, Ugh, this is another thing that I planned but it mm. didn't happen so yeah. I was like Ugh, no. but I was like fine 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 fine, fine. let's go <laughs> yeah. you know that kind of thing 
And because I'm the kind of person who wants to bounce back quick and get my yeah, stuff together, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. So, oof, my God. Also, my pantang was the worst time of my life. Anyways. Really? Yeah, because I had a C-section, I couldn't do anything. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, correct. La. When I pantang, I didn't, I barely got massages. Yeah, two, eight, two weeks, I think. Yeah, then you yeah. Itu it. pun yeah. sideway punya uh, massage. I cannot, yeah, cannot, I cannot get on sleep on your front. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I just hate I my whole I couldn't even lie down. <gasps> I couldn't even do sideways, you know. Because I had a problem where I had like mm. they call it like thunder what lightning crotch type uh, lightning, lightning crotch, crotch. <laughs> lightning crotch thunder had, yeah yeah lightning crotch yeah lightning Not crotch thunder, thunder crotch, crotch. <laughs> 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 but yeah so like I couldn't like I couldn't kepit my kaki and I couldn't sleep oh, sideways so no. I was literally on my back for a week and I couldn't get up and oh, I am someone no. who like I used to do like hit training yeah, I used yeah. to do Muay Thai yeah. you know and like I was always very like yeah, do, 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 yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and this is like nak bangun pun tak leh babe mm. like get up from sleeping okay. I couldn't get up oh, oh my, my god, god. Yeah. that's bizarre okay let's talk about bounce back expectations versus reality how is yours like Sophia after post post uh, oh my god birth how horizontal, how often were you horizontal? <laughs> it was so bad. I cried. I am, uh, when I had Mariam, my, I said this, I don't want the baby <gasps> in front of my mom and my husband. Mm. That's how bad my postpartum depression was. I was like, I was holding it and I just felt lonely. Like how yeah. you felt disconnected. Yeah. That's how I felt disconnected. And But my husband was so supportive. My mm-hmm. mom was like so lovely to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I don't want the baby. Then I just gave. Then Daniel just cried. Oh, love to see I know. It was such a... Like, I don't understand. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> but yeah. I love Mariam so much. But I did not know why. But now you did know, was now. it? Did anyone tell you though? No, because it was not a norm. Like I say, my mom is very like traditional kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. She always say this. Oh, whenever you, you know, like whenever we breastfeed our daughters yeah. and uh, our children, and sometimes you feel like much like, sedih mm. when they latch into us. Yeah. So my mom always said that, but it, she never explained. Like right. oh, it's because you know maybe you're going through postpartum kind of thing. But I'm always sad. Mm. That's why I didn't want to breastfeed because mm. I felt sad. And I remember I, I got sick after that One week after I gave birth I got sick So I was just sleeping I didn't want to take care of my baby And I just keep on putting my baby in my mom's oh. It took a while for me to bounce back But thank God I could bounce back yeah. But postpartum It says I don't like being pregnant Right on Even postpartum Oh my god I don't yeah. like it I love my children now But kalau I have to be pregnant again I think 10,000 hundred things That's gonna happen to yeah, me Yeah yeah, No yeah. but that's completely Natural thing to ask Because like A lot of people Would even think that In terms of like Maternal instincts Are gonna kick in that's immediately That's so not true Yeah you know That is actually quite a lie Like to be honest The first few months With Alia around Like I love her to bits Yeah you're right I totally love her yeah. I'm still sussing her out A little bit here and there though I mean cause I'm I'm like, I'm like, I'm like thinking, oh, are you, are you like a, um, like, you're my new housemate that I have to get to know now. And I, I, I don't know. Do you like me even? Yeah, do you, yeah, do you think yeah, we can yeah. hang out and stuff? But yeah, no. What about you? Like post delivery? Do you have? I, oh, my God. I think I have a similar situation with Sophia that I had. Now knowing it was postpartum depression. Right. But during, yeah. Oh, oh so my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. What? Yeah, but like I had a really, 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 really bad pantang. Like I was so my whole family kena COVID. I said to I actually kena COVID. That's why I I was supposed to get induced on at 40 weeks. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to get induced at, at 40 weeks, mm-hmm. but because I you're supposed to take a swap test before going in. So the night before I was supposed to go in, mm-hmm. I swapped test and I was positive. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. And man. I was just like, are you kidding me? So Ooh. if I had been induced earlier, I could have done normal tau. Oh no. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. So then like, um, so I had to wait. And then like, my water broke on the fourth day of my quarantine. So my water broke and I was technically still positive. 
So I went to the hospital and and like everyone else tengah quarantine like everyone in that house Whoa. quarantine. Yeah. So and your husband too? No, oh Jack was the only one who was fine. Oh, oh my, my god. Dad, my mom, Leisha, Ali, Adia oh semua gosh. kena. Like all of us. Dugaan, bro. Yo, Allah, you tak tahu man. It was like crazy. Anyway, so we went to the the like we went to the emergency. I was mm-hmm. masked up and everything. And my my water broke ah. So I was like I was like leaking Gushing. as we were going and everything. Oh, then we got there and they, they set me down the the damaso and everything. Mm-hmm. And then they said that like oh Jad like couldn't masuk because you're positive and he's negative. So he's <gasps> yeah. So I was alone in the the, the the birthing area. And then they were telling me that like if you're still positive, you might have to do this whole thing alone. <gasps> So I was like, uh, I don't matcha. What do you mean? Then they were like, if you are positive and he's negative, then he cannot masuk the, he cannot be here lah. Yeah. And you have to give birth alone. So I don't matcha menangis oh, on the bed, no. and I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. And then they swab test me. Negative. And then the nurse ran into my room and was like, uh, Ma'am, Ma'am, you are negative. No, you can call see. your husband. I call. Oh, I was already on FaceTime with Jai. He was somewhere nearby, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was like calling him. Oh my God, I'm negative. I'm negative. And he was like, I'm coming now. I'm no. coming now. And then he came in. And he was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> drama. Yeah, day. drama gila. Oh okay. my God. And then like and then had to emergency C section lah. Oh, da, 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 da. And then like I was so Jad was so... there during the emergency C section. Oh yeah, he was in the operation theater. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. swear that man mm. like Ya Allah grant him the highest of heavens because yeah. he was there throughout the entire process. Yeah. Yeah, much um <laughs> he, and he like watched okay like yeah. watched it all happening he yeah, was just yeah, like oh my yeah, god yeah, there yeah, was so well. much blood yeah. I was just like how, why are you looking like look away <laughs> but yeah and like <laughs> yeah and he was like there throughout the whole thing so like oh uh, I wouldn't have survived any of this without Jad yeah. seriously yeah. because even masa pantang tu uh-huh. it was the two of us in the room because our house had a few rooms like obviously <laughs> so it was just us in that one room with a newborn baby and a C section oh, woman man. and no one else could help us because oh, everyone tengah quarantine wow. and then like the only person that came that could come was like Kat Lea because she was she stays in a different place so yeah. she was completely cleared yeah So Kak Lea lah had to like like when we came back from the hospital Kak Lea was the one who like angkut I and everything and thank God she was there because yeah. she also pernah go through C-section mm. so she knew exactly like okay you need to get this type yeah, of bengkong yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. you are ni 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 you have to do yeah, this yeah, yeah, so yeah. nice that, to have you know? like a sister yeah. exactly. that has gone through that too. so that's why for me like thank God that she was there you know but mm-hmm. yeah so because I didn't so my expectations was like I'm gonna give birth and then they're yeah. gonna come and see me yeah, at the yeah, hospital yeah, 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 yeah. it's gonna be like a, oh uh, my god thank god you're okay kind yeah, of moment yeah, yeah, yeah. no it was like alone 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 and then like mm-hmm. I had my friends who came to the hospital to be there with me and it was like I this is what I mean by like I love my support system because mm-hmm. my like I have a group of best friends mm-hmm. and like Jack will call like okay who is free to jaga Yana today yeah, and then yeah, this yeah. person will come and then mm-hmm. like okay who about today and then like this person will come you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like literally one of my best friends Ellie had to watch me like like Rangka. slowly walk to the, oh, the toilet my God. for that first oh, pee that first post, oh, post no. uh, yeah post, post birth pee yeah yeah and she's and like you know anyone who's known me long enough knows that I'm really like bouncing the, I'm like yeah. dee, 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 you know so for her to see me yeah. so like already like right after I came out from the operation theater, mm-hmm. my other best friend came Nina yeah. and her husband yeah. and she saw me just drugged out and I kept I, I was so drugged up because I was on like different different kinds of meds sure. that I was I was, she would feed me and I'm eating and I'm going Falling then I'll asleep. wake up then I'll take another oh then I'll chew gosh. and I'll fall asleep like the whole thing it it felt like a movie you know when the patient like like tutup mata tutup mata buka the doctor's there and then tutup yeah, 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 buka yeah, yeah, yeah. tutup mata buka and then they give like it ubat yeah, you know yeah, 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 it felt yeah. like that Wow. And it felt like I was there for a week But wow. it was only three days Man, babe, okay We're yeah. gonna take a teeny teeny short break okay, okay, okay. But we will come back We're gonna continue on your story Don't go anywhere Just as earlier we were talking to Yana And she was saying about uh, How you uh, mother, When you were 
I think you were in your six se- C section, right? Yeah. yeah. That you felt like you lost yourself, I think. I think that's no, the word. Not the, C the section. Loneliness. Doing pantang. Ah, doing pantang. Oh, pantang yeah. That you felt like that's not you because you used to be this jumpy, perky yeah. kind of person. And suddenly you had to like jalan bungkuk like that. Yeah. So how do you... I couldn't even jalan, bro. I had to like hang on to jet. Like, yeah. I'm sure that... I, I'm oh. sure you felt like you were tied, like... You can't even do anything. Yeah, I couldn't do anything. Like oh, even man. getting up, I couldn't do myself. Like I had to, and that's another thing. Yeah. I, like connecting to earlier on how I said I always wanted to be independent. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly I have to depend on a man yeah. to get up. Ah, aku memang lah. You know my, my ego just. Dude. Yeah. But that's the thing, ta. Okay lah. Like it really. I think like the the initial standpoint of like vaginal births, you opt for it because your bounce back rate faster. is a lot faster yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I peed in my pants this one day because I, I was asleep and I slept for like I think I slept for about 6 hours I didn't get up to pee yeah? and I didn't realise I had been holding my pee and for whatever reason my womb area sucked Na mampus, mm-hmm. and I was basically screaming like help I can't get out I'm in so much pain because I just want to go to the toilet I can't freaking move and then the only way for me to move was to pee in my pants in bed bro oh. I was like it was like that if you want to talk about my ugly truth <laughs> that is your ugly truth dude oh. and you will continue to be busu your body doesn't change like the body factor dude like the ugly truth about motherhood for we me is come back from you barely do even if you have that hot body Lah, kan, yeah, yeah, yeah. You lost that way. Yes. You are in your pre baby weight. Yeah. Even then, you lost some of your basically bladder yeah. control. Yeah, my bladder has not gone back to normal. You know, I still pee a little bit when I laugh. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> some people didn't have to go to birth, birth and did that and yeah, it's yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's why I told Jack that like when I got pregnant, and I told him that like you know I will never be the same. Yeah, and there he was, was just like. No say young You can like bounce back And like everything will, You know like It's okay yeah. but you, I was like No 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 Because even if Let's say my body That just went through The worst Trauma of its life Bounces back mm-hmm. Mentally I will never bounce back True. You know I am never going to be The same person again Yeah Because the Yana who was before I was mm-hmm. a mom mm-hmm. is dead. Like, I'm sorry. You know, when. <laughs> Taylor they... can't come to the phone right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, she's dead. She's dead. She dead, dead. You know, like, so that's why, like, for me, like, I I did a lot of crying. I did a lot of, like, mental breakdown, going mm. to therapy. And I was just talking about this on my Instagram yesterday mm. that I had to do a lot of, like, physical, mental, and, you know, like, a lot of the work mm. to prepare myself because again I'm a planner mm-hmm. so I, I prepared you know like therapy and all those kind of things memang because you are the this is the ugly truth about motherhood yeah. we're talking about that yeah. the ugly truth is that you will never be the same person you are you were you used to be before yeah. before being a mom but the- yeah but honestly this ugly truth of motherhood comes with all these myths of motherhood, right? Mm. It's always like that. Mm. Sometimes we have the expectation because of all these myths lah. Kita dengar daripada mm. an nenek moyang and all these things, right? <laughs> oh, social media. <laughs> oh, social media. Uh, now, uh, now social our nenek moyang is social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is so true. Right. Oh, right. Oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah. That is so funny. I can totally imagine our kids going like, I heard there was a myth about this. Where'd you hear it from? Instagram. Instagram. Oh, yeah, so, so cool. I like Twitter. I want to ask the both of you this. Yeah. What's one motherhood myth you totally believe but found out was far from the truth maybe we start with Yana first hmm. no you first lah I'm just yeah yeah that what? myth yeah that one motherhood myth you totally believe but found out was too far from the truth for me is breastfeeding mm. it was such a breeze it's so nice yeah. bam yeah, mine blood was coming out for my people <laughs> yeah oh god mine was breastfeeding too definitely pantang Banyak though. <laughs> yeah, pantang as well, you know. People always say, oh, pantang is going to be like the best. Makanan pun best. You just, re- you just rehat je. Lepas tu, confinement lady datang, massage yeah. je. And then, uh, uh, not, susu, not uh, for breastfeeding, susu will come out like I had to join. Yeah. Memang tak lah. I have to drink all these seats and whatever. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. come out. Yeah, that no. Was, yeah. Mine would be, ah, uh, breastfeeding, cepat kurus. Oh my God, cepat kurus. Tapi you kena makan. Go. Kalau tak tak keluar, siut. Like, and then at one point, yeah. That's such an oxymoron kan like, yeah. Macam Oh uh, in You cepat kurus If you yeah. uh, breastfeed Tapi you kena makan Like nasi oh, yeah. Make sure that You are the things yeah, To yeah, make sure yeah. the susu Yeah no There's that What else is there Motherhood myths That's like Absolutely not true Um 
uh, the people at your baby shower are not necessarily the, the people who are going to be there for you oh, after yes. you're done. After you've given birth. Yeah, so true. Yeah. In my Ooh. baby shower, it's more men. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't have a lot of girlfriends. Because honestly, I have a lot of male friends in college yeah. and I didn't really have a lot of friends. So my husband did a baby shower with me and invited all these male oh friends that is my gosh. friend. None of them, they would just say congratulations. But obviously, they they can't relate to me. They're not married. Yeah. They're men some more. Yeah. So it's like totally different. Yeah. So I only have female friends like you guys. Mm. Now fast forward to like, what, six years after yeah. motherhood? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Like, thank right. God we found each other. Yeah, yeah. No, legit. I mean, like, I cannot say that though. Because mm. like, the people who were at my baby shower were the ones you at the yeah. hospital. You were yeah. very lucky with friends, I yeah. think. Ooh, it's very interesting you say that. But I only got lucky with friends from 16 years old. So I moved to... Uh, I know you guys are going to give me like <laughs> such for this, but like uh, I went to a private school, but only for two years. Okay. Uh, from four, from five. Yeah. So same, same. from four, from five it was when I found my legit group of friends that mm. I am still friends with them mm-hmm, until today mm-hmm. that I cannot live without them, that I'm yep. texting them every single day. This is the friends mm-hmm. from private school? Yes. Mm. Okay. Because I don't know why, but my private school friends, you would think that like, private school girls are like, mm, yeah, yeah, you know, but, but no, they're not. Yeah, same, same. They're not. They're uh, super <laughs> grounded. No, but I would also have to add on to it depends on which school you go to. Of course lah. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really, I think it depends on that, that, that yeah. like set of friends that you found yeah. and like, you know, whether you guys really bonded in yeah. such a way that it's like, I mean, friendships do come and go yeah, kind of situation. I mean, as but much as family uh, is there for us, sometimes having like outside perspective like friends is yeah. also nice to add on to it, right? Because I think our family, like my, for example, my mom, she's in a different era. Mm. So oh, yeah. the way she thinks is different. Yeah. Yeah. The way she, how she pantang last time was different. Mm. That kind of thing. So we cannot like relate that much. Yeah. But friends is different kind yeah. of thing, I think. That's yeah. why we always have that gap I think that was one of the things that kind of made me feel like even more grateful to have you guys in my life because Mm. that sense I mean I have a handful of friends who are moms as well and yeah they're a bit older than I am I mean sorry they're not older than I am they were younger moms and Mm. like as in their kids are a lot older now so finding that sense of relatability is like neither here nor there so you, you can't really like be like Yana, my hair is falling out and I don't know what to do. Babe, you should totally use this hair gel so it makes your covers your hair up and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, you don't get that sort of feeling once you are, you know, especially if you don't have that set of friends. And no offense to our friends who are, you know, without children. Love them to bits, but there are certain aspects of, like, motherhood. Nobody says how lonely it really, oh, yes. really can be. Even if we have this tiny human, but sometimes it just feels lonely. Dude, the tiny, tiny humans don't humans, freaking understand yeah. this. They don't even... you. I they mean, don't even understand themselves. But, oh my god! Do you know? Do you want to know a story? Last night, Zara, I cried. Mm. I had a bro- breakdown last mm. night. I cried, mm-hmm. and Zara didn't want to sleep. Mm. And she was like, "Oh, just climbing on mm. me." And then I, I, I just like suddenly I just lie down, and then I was just lie down looking at Zara. And suddenly I burst into tears, but mm. I think I was overwhelmed. Then Zara looked at me, mm. and then she just hold my cheek, oh. and she's just like. Oh, no. Don't go, don't go. She said that, but in like a one-year-old kind of black thing. Uh, and I cried some more because she said uh, that. So I'm like, that's the thing. Like, sometimes I have this little human, right? Okay, they don't say much. Yeah. They wouldn't know what to say. Yeah. But that thing makes you much. Oh my God. That's so sweet. You know, that kind of feeling. Bukan is like, it's not like they don't understand. It's just that like, do you know the Billie Eilish song like don't tell my boyfriend is not what he's made for mm. uh-huh. that's how I feel with children like especially with my son it's mm. like that's not what he's made of like that's not what he's made for like mm. he's not made f- to understand tend me you. or to, to tend yeah. to me no that's my job you know like I always tell this to all my friends that like your kid did not choose mm. to be born mm. you chose, chose to have that yeah, kid yeah, mm. yeah. so your responsibility to that little child mm-hmm. is tenfold mm-hmm. and it is not until now they sampai ke, oh sorry mm-hmm. they sampai mati sampai pergi you know heaven or hell so, so, sampai ke sana tau mm-hmm. that is how your response that is how long yeah. your responsibility is yeah, yeah. because that kid did not like they don't yeah. they, they, we they are don't the owe you chose. they don't yeah. owe you anything no. that's why I was thinking like when she did that right to me like, oh my god mm like this little human, right? Just came to me and just touched my yeah. cheek and everything just changed. The perspective, that's why the way we think, like sometimes the expectation and reality of motherhood mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is just so like overwhelming that we always want this, we expect this. Yeah. Actually, reality 
It's senang je sebenarnya. Yeah. Motherhood ni is chill. Yeah. We 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 make do. Yes. Yeah. If if we have a more calmer, casual mindset, it'll be it, fine. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because like having that sense of control of everything just makes things a whole <laughs> lot worse. Can't relate, but okay. Yeah. No, I mean, come on, man. Like, I mean, we plan and we plan, but you you have that mentality where you're still like, we plan, we plan. But there are bigger things in life. But it's true. And it's not going to happen. It's true. But you can accept that. But I've seen moms, sorry, I've mm. seen moms who have plan and plan and plan and it doesn't go their way. And bro, the sense of resentment is next freaking yeah. level. The resentment yeah. towards their partners, to their the children uh, and everyone else. And even more so when you have that sense of resentment, all the more that you feel a lot lonelier. But I'm going to go back to partners. Let's mm-hmm. talk about expectations versus realities. Ooh, partners I edition. I love talking about this one. I okay. love talking about this one. All oh right. So... What were we expecting from the get go from our partners? As on, as well? I mean, I mean, you said it already clearly already. Yeah, God. no, but I did not expect him to be that hands on. Mm. I thought he would, because I mean, he's always been the guy who's like, I know, like hands down, any I can like just I can literally depend on him for every single thing in my life. I knew that, mm. but I did not know that he would be so dependable that he would literally take care of me and the baby during the pantang and he was so hands on in a way that like he mandikan i mean mm. he mandikan the baby change the baby and everything like newborn mm-hmm. fresh from yeah. the hospital punya Mandi, baby and yeah. I did not expect him to go yeah. that far like honestly I thought you know because we are so used to Man, man, there, there's just some things that, think, don't, yeah, like that don't, yeah, don't click we, to yeah. them, you know. So oh. we we have we have to have that that certain like expectation yeah. of we cannot we cannot think that men work the way that we do because mm-hmm. they don't they really don't you know. So my expectation for him was that he would have some things that he won't be able to do or mm. but he can do everything. But he did everything. Yeah. If he can breastfeed, so I think he breastfeed. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what no, he actually, said. He was, was just like, young. If I could, I would already." Yeah, yeah, you know? no, yeah. actually, do you know what? Same with my husband Alex, like bless his heart. Do you know he was the he was a better swaddler? Yes. Yeah, yes. because I there was this one night I genuinely cried, okay, because I was like taking the night shift and then I was like, I forgot how to swaddle the baby. Yeah. And he's like, it's okay. And then after, but then it's hilarious. Like I loved how like the one expectation that I did not expect, like anyway, like the thing that I totally did not expect was how my husband actually hold held quite a bit of guilt at the beginning. Of the pregnancy, yeah. Because he knew that after having witnessed the birth of his child via C-section and like, yeah, like like what you said, like, you know, he Mm. and he remembers it, you know. So there's the first layer. And then you take this out and you do it. It looked like like leather. It looked like leather. It smelled like, don't know why, like burn whatever hair or whatever nonsense. And like, the taking everything out and then like, like, they take out the uterus and then they put it back in and he was like, okay, this is absolutely insane. And then watching me wanting to breastfeed, pump and all that stuff. Stuff, he felt like there was so much of the bulk of the work that I had already done that he was like I don't oh, know if I'm so doing nice. enough yeah. so he tried to st- he stepped up in so many ways my dad was like well so hands on huh, Alex like that and but for Alex he's like but honest, I, I can't do enough I yeah, haven't done enough exactly honestly I said. think it's mm. the man of this generation okay yeah. I think we don't give them credit mm. this is to the man that ha- is helping the wife. not all of them deserve the credit yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> But honestly, okay. this generation, because I've talked to one friend also, the husband is also very hands-on and very lucky. We're very privileged yeah. to have yeah. husbands yes. that's very hands-on. Yes. But they they look at us, I think they really love us like in a way that they yeah. like, okay, la, I want to do, yeah. I want to be hands-on. Even my mom or my grandmother, because they're from the previous generation, they're like, why you let Daniel do that? Mm. Why you let this? Mm. But it's okay. It's their child. It's, yeah. her, uh, it's his child. It's okay. Like, yeah. He can do it. But why you have to stand up? You have to do Because it's like previous generation, right? So I think it's a generation barrier in that sense. But we should have me, another conversation about this yeah, generation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but honestly, I'm very, we're very lucky to have husbands that do that. And I think they're traumatized looking at our inside. Mm. That's, what That's why they're like, okay, I'm going to like, you know, I sign yeah. up my wife. So I'm yeah. just going to help them here yeah. and there kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. yeah, expectations with husband. I think we don't. Have, I think in general we shouldn't have high expectations yes. in anything. Yeah. So then we wouldn't be disappointed. Actually, that is. I mean, like you know, it's it's so true, but it's so sad <laughs> yeah. because the bare the concept of the bare minimum is there is in existence. You should not think that just because your hus- your partner changes a diaper it means that they're a great parent or whatever that is how much time and effort that he takes to take care of the the fa- his family like his wife his his child and all that like that plays an even bigger role but then also at the same time it's like if we have too much of those expectations because sometimes they really just they're so non-maternal and they don't pick up on the little things like Ilagi we have if we're control freaks ourselves that we <laughs> want to make sure that everything is done the way that we want it oh, to yes. be done <laughs> uh, that uh, would have been the chapter uh, that's <laughs> so, that is yeah, a whole other yeah, yeah exactly idea. I mean like you know like I'll give you a perfect example like you know Alex again like I said he he does have moments where he needs to be reassured that he is doing a fantastic job because he always is doing a fantastic job no matter what. I won't deny that. Like, yes, it wouldn't be the same way that I would do it, but you have your own style as long as the child is fed and is clean and blah, blah, blah. (laughs) It should be (laughs) bordo. Your face. (laughs) Sorry, I just gotta, yeah. No, but, but at the same time, at the same time, like, there are the cutest moments uh, for me. My favorite one was like the most unexpected thing that he did was when he video called me when I was at work. Aww. He never video calls me when I'm at work. Oh. So I was like, what the frick happened? La? Like, what's going on? And the first thing he did, he took the phone. He was like, hi, hi. Uh, quick one. He takes the phone, takes it to the to the bedroom. And he's like, I just want you to see that there are the pillows that are bordering around here, right? Around the bed. I want you to see how high they are first. I was like, what happened? And he was like, she fell off the bed. And then I was like, babe, oh, no. it's bound to happen. Why did you have to set that disclaimer? Oh, like, no. It's almost as if that he himself thought that if he had done something wrong, the automatic thing is to blame him. Mm. Yala, yala. Ah, ah. They mm. should make a community group, man. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's here. La. Daddy's, Daddy's here. here. That's right. Oh my god. No, but because that's that's another thing that I was talking about. Like they like I, I cannot speak for your husbands, but yeah. my husband specifically also under his trauma in a way that he he understands and he knows mm. because men also see past men yeah. like how we see our past moms and yeah. everything kan? he has seen past men who do the absolute barest of the most minimumist mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and he doesn't want to do that yeah. he wants to do more he wants yeah. to do the most you I, know agreed yeah so there are certain things that when he doesn't do mm-hmm. because he can't like breastfeed mm. he's guilty Dia macam, you know, mm. I wish I could, you know, mm. like, I wish I could, I wish I could, we can feed him like this, we can, you know, you, mm-hmm. like, he's always like, no, but I can always do this, I can always do that. I'm yep. like, like, yes, I am, you can, it's okay, you mm-hmm. know, and like, you're doing so good, like, you have to like, tell them like, yeah. you're doing good and like, you can't imagine anyone from the generation before this mm-hmm. doing the things that you're doing now, tau. Yep. Yeah. But it's also... The fact that like talk, going back to like how expectations of like dulu punya mm-hmm. yeah. you know like my my parents never said like oh you have to do this or you have to do that but because it's already embedded now here yeah. that like every time Judd's around when he's like not working and he's around and we wa- he wants to hold his child I'm like tak apalah sayang oh like, my god I'm like tak apalah sayang I can take the I can take him oh my god and then and then Judd will be like he's my kid and then yeah. I'm like alright oh, <laughs> and he's also the same way yang macam I'm not helping you, Saya. Mm-hmm. I'm the father, you know? Mm-hmm. So that is the kind of thing I'm more macam, yeah lah. And it's something for him too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when we say like, oh my God, he's so hands-on, like da 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 Jad will have to remind me that like, I'm not hands-on. I'm, I'm a, a father. father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, same sentiments for, by Alex. I can yeah. tell you that for free because he was the same thing. He's like, I don't see what the big deal is. I am doing my best. But he, like I said, there is a stem of guilt within them too. Mm. So another expectation versus reality for partner related. What was it like after giving birth? <laughs> I mean, you already know I was a hell of a mess. Yeah. Like, I was a mess. Yeah. And I don't think Jad has ever seen me like that. Yeah. 
Because I'm always the one yang macam, I got this. Mm. I got that. You need mm. help? I mm. got you. You yeah. know that kind of thing? Yeah. And it was very frustrating for him because he was alone. Mm. Like, you think it's lonely for moms? Yeah. He had to take care of me, me yeah. work, yeah. his family. Yeah. All while I was here healing. Mm-mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he yeah. could not ask for my help. Yeah. And most times, for men especially, mm. the only person that can ask for help is from their spouse. Yeah. So that's why, like, it was really... He has never seen me in that bad of a state. But I can very comfortably say that both of us were hella in a bad state. And I think mm. they also feel guilty because they made us like that. I think well, they, they, they no made, they. Uh, I mean, they feel like that, but yeah, actually, that. it's not their fault. It, yeah. This is just natural. Yeah. yeah, but they feel like, oh my god, like you know, we want to have a child. Or, so, or, yeah, so it's not a shared burden. Yeah, per se, so because, she, yeah. they felt like, which I, you know, I made her pregnant, and yeah. this is how she has to handle it. So they feel kesian, tapi yeah. they're macam, but they can't do anything. Like they can't yeah. do anything about yeah. it, kind of thing. Yeah. So that's what Jack has said multiple times when I was during my pregnancy, and I was like, oh my god, I'm getting so big. Jack was like sayang you know if you could like detach him and I hold him for a while mm-hmm. I would memang tak lah right but then yeah, yeah mm-hmm. betul I, I mean one of the things that I remember about Daniel is I can get whatever I want when I'm pregnant in mm-hmm. terms of food mm-hmm. in terms of like help yeah. then after the nine months <laughs> he ran away he's like you're not pregnant so I'm not getting you that sandwich go get it like sometimes I'm like I used to crave samyang on sourdough bread And wow. it has to be sourdough bread. Wow. And, and the people say, that is just out of the world, but it's so good, guys. You should try it. I still eat it until now. Samyang on, on the on spicy sa- noodles? The spicy noodles on sourdough bread. Okay. So that gila, I will not say no. I will always try some. Never I will try never everything one time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's not that spicy on bread, but yeah, I always wanted that. So he mm. will cook that. And I remember asking him, I wanted like uh, pow but I want the kacang tanah inside which is like in Sabah so he drove the whole of KL Whoa. to find that but he couldn't find it but the one thing that I will always remember memories of him is whenever I'm pregnant both both pregnancy that nine months whatever I want whether it's food he'll take from me mm. and thank god he's a pilot so kalau I kepi nasi kanda pun dia macam okay I'm on the way to Penang so we're all good right now it's like oh, yeah. one of the things that I'm grateful for lah like, yeah. having a husband Yeah. And I think yes They might not hold Like carry our babies yeah. But they do all these things Beyond you yeah. know, Beyond what they That in itself Is a conversation Between the three of us We are massive privilege For that Yes that's right Amen. But I will ask you this Not an expectations Versus reality question But how did you Communicate to your partners Exactly what you needed Because I think That if there are any people who That are listening Yeah Who are not having They don't have the same Circumstances as we do Whereby their husbands Are don't Like Are not always there for them How do we communicate with our husbands? How husband? do you communicate yeah. with Jack? I'm sure. There must have been something. Yeah, must be dis- disconnected. Hey, yeah, of course. Okay, th- another thing is that like a lot of people have this like idea that Jack and I are like perfect and we never mm, yeah. fight. That's far from the truth. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We bicker all the time, all day, every day. We're mm. like, yeah, no, but you, you yeah. You know, yeah. always, always. But um, I think the both of us, what really helped is that we went to couples therapy. Yes. After we got married, mm. like really early after we got married. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so we went to couples therapy after we got married, before I got pregnant. And we 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 went, bukan because we had a problem, but mm. we went because we just wanted to see maybe we do have a problem. Mm-hmm. Like we don't know if we have a problem. Mm-hmm. So when we went, the our therapist kind of like, Like lay, how are she like laid out the foundation that like I Janis Machani he mm. Janis Machani so our communication is hundred percent different mm. complete different we are if if you put it on a chart mm. he's literally the opposite one end of the other yes. spectrum he's yeah. literally the opposite of me mm-hmm. I I am more um, emotional I'm more uh, apa tu EQ mm. he is very IQ he's very mm. goal oriented mm. he's just like problem solve problem solve I'm more of a, okay, we can solve the problem, but you want to talk about it? Do you want to, mm. how, how are you feeling, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm someone who's more in tune with my emotions mm-hmm. as where he is, he has a lot of emotions, but he doesn't know what 
what he's feeling. Mm. You know? Mm. Mm-hmm. So, but then when I got pregnant, it was terbalik. I was going through a lot of emotions yeah. that I didn't know what I was feeling. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was going through a lot emotionally, psychologically. Yeah. And he lagi lah don't know how to... Maneuver that yeah. long. So, there were a lot of times that I I would just cry. I would just cry and cry and cry. And he would sit there, watch me crying and uh, and like ask me like, what do I do? Mm. What do I say? I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm-hmm. You know? And I also said like, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're going to do also. Mm. But just a simple fact of like, telling your partner, I don't know what to do. And you saying that like, I also don't know. Mm-hmm. It's already like the first step of the both of you communicating. Mm, yeah. Because mm-hmm. like, you you guys bring each other to an equal play yeah. field yeah. where you where you realize that like yeah betul lah like both of us are not perfect both yeah. of us don't know what's happening yeah so when that when you get to like ground zero then only you can tambah love that yeah so mm. I think that for me and ju- that is like our number yeah. one thing couple therapy rocks yeah couple therapy and like I that's why like you know there's very like backwards thinking of like you go to therapy means you have a problem means you're crazy mm-hmm. means you're only I'm like that is complete opposite of why everyone should go to therapy mm. you should go to therapy because you want to fix I mean, yeah you before be together you go crazy mm. yeah, yeah, for yeah, me yeah. it's like before you yeah. get there yep. go to therapy yeah. and also I think for mothers I mean wives out there that mm. is also a mom they need to communicate with their husbands like to make sure that they understand. Because yeah. sometimes they communicate with him too, but do their husband understand? Yeah. Do, yeah. Does he want the right one? So I think yeah. failure of communication is when, okay, I want this, 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 and you expect he understands, but sometimes mm. he does not understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different thought process altogether. Yeah. I mean, like, every time I have an, like, an argument or even a discussion with Alex where we're both not on the same page, I will stop and I'll look up at the sky and be like, I can't draw it out right now. I'm not Mm. really sure where you're coming from. And Mm. I think it's also like the choice of language that we use with each other. Like that was definitely a factor to it. Yeah, tone. I mean, the number of times I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I mean, (laughs) there's this one time, I I think I've said it already. I'll say it again. There's this one time my my husband was just straight up. He went like, you know, we need to talk about the way you're talking to me right now. Mm. I was like, oh shit, my baby is mad. Like, oh my. Because, no, because like you totally don't realize it. But I think it's because if part of the reason why we don't get to communicate our thoughts properly is when we internalize our yes. like own shit inside our heads so much so that we completely like yeah. it's all frazzled and we it's always like festering right? yeah, and yeah. We, mm. sorry and we talk about partners right because that will bring us to be a better parent yes mm. so that's why we talk about like how we can communicate better so then the household is like harmonious yeah mm. and honestly when we talk to like there's time where I talk to my husband and I'm just like raising my voice mm-hmm. and just because I mean enthusiastic but yeah. he thinks like it's like why are you being rude yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time okay yeah, that is yeah. Jack and I punya problem yeah. uh, I come from a house that's very loud mm-hmm. very opinionated yeah. we're all girls yeah. so we need to like voice my, everything yeah, out my dad yeah. is just like if they don't want to listen scream <laughs> that's my dad he was just like you guys are girls and you guys have to do what every man is doing mm-hmm. and then some Mm-mm-mm. so you have to have a great like argument get all the facts right get all the points done and if they still don't listen scream mm-hmm. that is my dad mm-hmm. so and we did the complete opposite from Jet's house yeah. they're very like Calm. nobody really talks about yeah. you know yeah, things yeah, yeah, if yeah, you want to yeah, talk yeah. about it let's sit down as a family let's talk about it you know things like that and so for when the the biggest miscommunication or the barrier of communication yeah. that like Jack and I had especially earlier mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. was that he always thought that I was angry mm. or that I was being like um, mean like I was being degrading mm. because of like the he always says this uh, it's not what you say it's, it's the, the way, way you say, say it, it. Yeah. so that's why mothers mm. or like wives I think when you like we come from basically we have partners that supportive that yes. they understand us but there might be moms out there that does not have that privilege yeah. and I think that we we there's always like way like couples therapy yeah. or talk it out yes. if it doesn't work then that's why you have to go couples therapy or talk to someone else yeah. that maybe can help you and 
because at the end of the day you guys marry each other because of the love that you have mm. so I'm sure there is you know just stick down there yeah. Yeah. and see Mm-mm. and if the way you're not talking like the way you're communicating is obviously not working then change the way yeah. that you're yeah. shift it shift it add, add you know what like in moments like that when you know shit hits a fan everything everyone gets mad change position yeah. drink some water relax take a breather and like really you just you wanna add yeah. yeah this is a bit of a more controversial take but if all of that is said and done and that doesn't work oh my god work, are you gonna say that too? yeah <laughs> if all of that doesn't work <laughs> Have a, put on a little jazz music or whatever music that you like. Yeah. Have, a, sexy, uh, have a little boom boom time and then talk to him after that. Wow. Men are very so, like very accepting and yeah. more susceptible. <laughs> and when they are satisfied, they are, they are, their ears are open wide. Oh my once gosh. The, the tank is oh empty. Oh my you know? god. <laughs> the best rap up. Yeah. Thank you, Shari, for Ariana. But uh, we're gonna call you for the next season. Yeah, for wait, wait. Sure. <laughs> thanks so much. It's yeah. been so much fun, and I hope that uh, everybody that's listening mm. takes you know any point. But if you have any question, you can always follow Yana and DM her. Maybe you know yeah, ask. I always yeah. reply. Uh, I always or reply. even Mama's here uh, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much again, Yana, for coming. This thank you for fun. having me. Yeah. I love it. I feel like it's not enough time. Oh yeah. no, no, definitely not. Like three hour sessions. Yeah, no. yeah. That's why whenever we all hang out together, it's always one full day, basically. Yeah. 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 It's it's always like like event after event and yeah, after yeah. Like coffee coffee yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 pretty much but thank you so much for joining us until thank next you. time but in the meantime you know join us uh, join the community for Mama's Here podcast uh, on Instagram and definitely send in your questions to ask Sassy Sally because she's taking it every week and she'll be happy to answer for you but uh, be sure to join us next time for more real talk about the joys and challenges of motherhood keep embracing each other and uh, with a lot of love light laughter and a bit of grace so cheers bye, bye guys See you next week. Today's episode of Mama's Here podcast is produced by Kelvin Tay, Ragani Ravi, and Brian Henry. Also edited by Brian Henry, Aswan, and Kelvin Tay. For more of us, find us on all social media platforms at Mama's Here Podcast. We've been your hosts, Diana Hashim and Sophia Mustan. Bye! Bye.